So, good afternoon, folks. Um, really pleased to be here this afternoon, everybody, uh, um, amongst our friends and colleagues within uh, primary care. Thank you, uh, Vicky and Sir Lewis, for uh, setting the scene. So, I'm delighted to be here uh, this afternoon with my colleague Rachel Burke, who's the Tech Programme Manager for our Near Me team, and I'm the National League for the Near Me Network. And I'm also delighted to be joined by our recently a uh, new colleague, Rosie, Rosie Cooper, who is going to be our improvement lead for the Near Me Network. Um, we would um, encourage folk to follow us on Twitter at, at NHS Near Me and myself at Mark Bezik. And also we, we've been looking at using various hashtags to support our work with primary care staff around Scotland. And you'll see those on the screen just there. Now, what we're going to look at this afternoon is very much around some, some scene setting as we strive to offer near me as a choice for patients. Uh, we're going to look at some of the, the challenges or the misconceptions that, that, that have you know, we've been aware of in the last wee while. I also look at some of the, the really super practical examples that, that primary care staff have put into practice uh, uh, in the last sort of six months or so. Um, we're very keen to do a bit of scene setting for people around near me, if, if near me is something that um, is new to you. We'll explore the benefits uh, of near me. And Rachel's going to take us through some of the quality improvement implementation process, and then we're going to just draw on some examples of primary care. Um, we're very keen as a team to have some dialogue with you as, as a staff group. So we're going to run through these slides pretty quickly, um, uh, and, but we were very keen to make time for some question and answer session uh, dialogue at the end. So if you have questions uh, as the uh, slides go through, please pop them in the Q&A and we'd be very uh, help, we're very um, pleased to answer those at the end and, and discuss any um, issues or challenges or, or celebrate successes around your use of Near Me uh, across Scotland. So Near Me is, is a is safe, it's secure, it's had all of the information governance um, work done in the background for the NHS in Scotland. Doesn't require patients to download, they can come straight in from any device as long as they've got good access to the local internet. Um, it's very simple for, for both patients and clinicians to, to set up and conduct a Near Me call. Um, and there's lots of information on the net, <coughs> excuse me, that you'll see at the end of the presentation that you can refer to for more information. Just to get you uh, a bit of a history in the last sort of few months, this is the NIMI consultations per week from March the 1st this year. So we were averaged around 300 in March and last week we nearly got to 90,000. So uh, there's been a significant amount of, of NIMI uptake, uh, which has been a silver lining of, of, of the COVID pandemic in terms of enabling people to be offered uh, consultations with their healthcare professionals using video. Um, again, there's, there's, a, there's a slowly building body of evidence around near me in terms of safety and cost effectiveness, uh, in terms of keeping staff safe and also patients using less PPE, um, decreasing the need for staff to travel out with surgery, saving time and money, and also enabling um, services to be continued to be provided to our most vulnerable patients within care homes, for example. So there's some, there's some good literature out there that's beginning to be gathered around um, using video appointments, but also acknowledging that it, it should supplement, not replace the telephone, which again is a very well documented, a useful tool. So, so near me is, is amongst a suite of tools that we can enable uh, to offer as a choice for patients. And, and recognition that the visual component of video calls is, is a distinct advantage over the telephone uh, as, a, as a choice for patients. So early this year, we were really keen to capture um, what the public thought of near me. So we undertook a public engagement exercise in June and July. Uh, and we also did an, uh, an equality impact assessment. So just to briefly touch on that, in summary, the benefits that were identified interestingly by both health professions and the public were very similar in relation to lower infection risk, uh, less travel, more convenient, uh, better for the environment. So again, some really common themes between both professionals 
and patients. And if you'd like more information on the public consultation, the link is here and we can make that available to people at the end if helpful. Following on from the public consultation, we did an equality impact assessment as well to make sure that, that near me was accessible to, to groups within Scotland that found accessing services difficult at times. And that threw up some very interesting um, results and that it challenged our assumptions about, about which people would find it more or less difficult to interact with the video call. Uh, for, for example, around people with autism or the elderly uh, and, and finding that a lot of elderly folk were very able to, to access um, uh, video calls and, and some people with autism found it very, very helpful and some people with autism didn't find it helpful. So it very much encouraged us to offer it as a choice as a, as a, a choice for individual patients rather than a, a group for example of patients and assuming that the, the same answer would be common across the whole clinical group um, and again if you would but also would it also help us recognize that there are sectors of our Scottish population that do experience digital poverty and that is a real issue for some people and that's something that we were very keen to work along the Scottish Government with in terms of connecting Scotland to make sure this technology is accessible to as many people as possible. Again if you'd like to um, explore more around the equality impact assessment uh, the link is here in this slide and we can make that available at the end. So that's a bit of scene setting around near me and what we've been doing this last year. I'm going to now pass on to my colleague Rachel um, who is uh, now going to run through the quality improvement process as we run through and I will move her slides on for her. Okay over to you Rachel. Thank you Mark. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how to implement near me into your practice and some of the more practical elements um, in your decision making um, when using near me as well as uh, the quality improvement project that we undertook mid this year. Next, please, Mark. So when we talk about implementing NIMI, we break this into three key steps. So we look at the technical setup, the service processes, as well as the individual training or that work staff level engagement. Next, please, Mark. So first, in terms of technical setup, it is important that all clinicians have a reliable internet connection, a device for calling, for making the video calls, and making sure you've got sufficient equipment um, within your practice to make the calls. Uh, you've got the Chrome, Safari, or Microsoft Edge browser, as well as access to NIMI. So making sure you have access to a waiting area and you, you've got your account set up. Um, I do believe that the majority, I think around 90 to 95% of GP practices across Scotland have a waiting area. So that's really great news. That means that you can, you can, you do have access to near me. And also just to note, if, if you are home working or if someone in your practice is working remotely, making sure that all these technical elements, um, they've got that set up at, at their home as well. Next please, Mark. So training, there are many online training resources available. Um, however, the key platform is the Turas platform. So that's um, hosted by NES. And on that platform, there's a range of videos. So you've got videos on technical skills. So how you can, how to use the NIMI platform. Uh, there's some videos around video consulting skills. So this is for clinicians. So what considerations, um, when doing a video as opposed to face to face or telephone um, and there's some entertaining videos there on that as well as uh, information and details on practice processes and other resources uh, that may support you um, in upskilling yourselves and your staff um, in using you me. Next please Mark. Now probably the most difficult of the three steps um, when looking at using NIMI is the processes. So this is looking at how to embed NIMI into your existing systems. So looking at both your clinical and administrative processes. 
Uh, and so this is one of the key focuses of our quality improvement project that we did in primary care. So just to quickly touch base on some of the key uh, considerations. So it's looking at the clinical criteria for using NIME. So when will NIME be used? What presentations uh, will be beneficial for use of NIME, uh, which will require a face to face and just really unpicking what that looks like for your practice. Uh, also, considering that appointment scheduling process. So whether you have set clinics on vision or EMIS that, uh, or set codes for near me consultations and just what that booking process looks like um, and how you distinguish, say, video from face to face or telephone in your systems. Uh, also, patient information and entry. So how will a patient enter that waiting area? How will you deliver that link to the patient? Will it be via text or email? Will it be on your website? Just unpicking what that process will look like for your particular practice. And when a patient does arrive in that waiting area, how, who will greet them? Will a receptionist greet them similar to a face to face or will the clinician um, jump in and, and join that consultation room online? Uh, and also thinking about contingency plans if things, if a call does drop out, what will that look like? As well as follow up and any forms that are required. So if a script is needed or is a follow up appointments needed, what does that look like virtually and how does that differ from face to face? Next please, Mark. Now to understand a lot of that process work, uh, we conducted a quality improvement uh, project. So we did this with uh, five GP practices, so six GP practices and five GP out of hours services across Scotland. Uh, so this was run in around July, August this year. Um, and from this project, we've really understood some of the answers to those process questions that uh, were on the previous slide and we've pulled that all together in national best practice guidance. So this covers uh, some clinical pathways for using NIMI as well as uh, administrative processes. So there is a link to that guidance uh, within this slide deck so we can circulate that to you as well. And we're now um, early next year, we're looking at uh, sharing the learnings from this project and from the guidance across Scotland through a series of local webinars. So do please keep an eye out for those. Next, please, Mark. I uh, just wanted to quickly show you the participants in the project. Um, I won't go into too much detail on what they found and what they uh, what they did as, as it's depicted in the guidance. And we will go into detail in this um, in our local webinar series next year. But I just wanted to point out that we did really want to get a variety of different GP practices. So those in, say, rural areas, those in island communities, those in more metropolitan areas, just to get a real solid understanding of, of the differences and whether that local need impacts upon the processes as well. Next please, Mark. Uh, and this is the link to the guidance, so you can click on that link and, and you'll find the primary care guidance. I think that is all for me, so thank you, Mark. I'll hand back to you. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for taking us through the, uh, the QI approach. And, and uh, Rachel, myself and Rosie will be very happy to explore that in a little bit more detail uh, later on if you've got questions around what would that look like uh, in our practice. So we'd be very keen to, to engage with you on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So some of the focus areas that came out of the projects that, that, that Rachel successfully ran were around the treatment of residents and care homes, acute conditions, People were, were contacting practices for looking at where near me would fit in with initial triaging and also, you know, the conversations you might want to have with somebody with a long term condition. Do they need to come into surgery to see you or can you have that conversation using a video call for things like asthma, mental health and diabetes? There's some very good um, literature on diabetes reviews being carried out um, remotely now that uh, we've just come across this last week or so. So what I'd like to do now, uh, just briefly, is to, I suppose, pick out some highlights from some of the projects that Rachel's involved in and some of the other stories that, that um, our colleagues and friends in, in primary care have shared with us. So uh, we, we met a GP who, who'd come across, uh, the practice was being phoned by a very anxious patient about their health condition, and it had numerous phone calls with different members of the practice. And one of the GPs on one of the occasions said, Let, let's have a video call. And that video call 
it was an, enabled that patient to feel reassured because the health professional had seen that patient and, and, and seen their condition. And, and the advice they'd been given previous was good advice. And, and I think that that different level of communication uh, resulted in that, that patient not phoning again. So it, it, it helped meet that need and prevented further repeat phone calls asking for reassurance. Um, some of the feedback we've had on Twitter has been around, we have um, uh, questionnaires that go out at the end of uh, near me calls. So uh, we've had comments like a video call is much better than a face to face with a mask on, which I thought was an interesting kind of slant on that. We forget how much we, we, we gain from, from seeing someone's, all of someone's face. Um, we've had staff um, within within the nursing and the, the GP population talking about respiratory assessments where you can you can look at someone's breathing. You can't catch that over the, over the phone. Um, other GPs and other staff have talked about moving from phone to near me straight away. So if the, if the if the kit and again I appreciate this might not be the same for everybody. If there's near me kit at your desk and you're having a phone call and you want to switch to near me, you can send somebody a text or an email and go straight into a near me call from your desk. Um, and conversely, if, if near me isn't working that day for you or the patient doesn't want to be seen or would like to speak to you, then by all means use, use near me, but switch back to a phone call if that's what that patient needs on the day. Um, again, care home travel was a big thing for some surgeries. That staff traveling out, but also care home staff traveling into a surgery and they solved all that by, by using near me. Um, we've had really good um, out of hours examples where it's been late at night and people have had really good quality conversations using videos. So it's meant that people haven't had to travel long distances uh, in the middle of the night to have a healthcare need met. Um, we've had examples of uh, an out of hours practitioner speaking to a family whose child had had a foot injury and um, the child also had autism and there's the concept of taking this child to uh, an emergency department at that time of night would have been very traumatic for all the family but that was avoided because the type of injury the child had didn't really need to be seen by um, uh, uh, emergency department so the wider context of the family not just the child's foot injury could be gathered and acted upon with a video call um, to, to save that, that kind of wider trauma. I'm just going to show you uh, again. So these are very um, kind of conversationally based um, uh, interactions on near me. I'm going to show you very much uh, uh, more of a, a clinical kind of um, uh, actual nursing uh, podiatry care um, example here, where this is a fantastic example of, of some wound management that occurred using near me during COVID where a lady with diabetes had had some major foot surgery and the, between the, 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 the local practice and the um, podiatrist, they they'd managed to do this wound management where the husband of the, of the lady was very happy to carry the wound management out. They dropped all the kits off the letterbox at the patient's house and they did the wound management sessions together using near me. And, and the, 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 so I think it was quite dramatic. Um, I'm an occupational therapist by trade and, and, and to see that from a podiatry point of view was I was just amazed. So again, some really nice um, hands on clinical um, impact as well with, within using near me. Um, so so that's just some of the highlights of some of the project work that's that's come out of, of the work that Rachel's done and, and the relationships we've, we've, we've made with people that have been using near me in practice. So. I would like to now, um, uh, I'm going to just un do some Q&A and I would also ask you at the end of the, the session of, of our section, I would like to just put a quick survey into the chat and it's only five questions should take less than a minute to answer. Um, and I would really like for people to, to help us um, with that, uh, just to gather where you're at with your near me and what sort of help you might need from our team to support you in moving um, near me forwards. And so I'll put that in the chat a, a bit later on, but I would like to, I can't see the, the questions at the minute. So when I when I unshare my screen, hopefully we can we can have some dialogue with some people uh, in the audience. So um, let me just stop presenting and come back into the room.
Okay. So I can see a question about IT infrastructure, not good enough to support the email practice due to insufficient bandwidth, which is disappointing. Uh, absolutely, that 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 is an issue. And again, that's something that I think within Scottish Government we're looking at trying to uh, address uh, in terms of making sure connectivity is, um, what's the word, accessible to all. But yeah, I, I feel your pain on that one. That's a, that's a tricky one that's, that's, that's bigger than, than the practice you're in. Um, And I think it is. OK, so. Coming to. So can we ask do patients get asked if they would like an email consultation or is the default telephone? That's a very interesting one. And, and again, that's what we'd like to maybe have some dialogue with with um, the the staff that that are the first port of the first point of entry into into a, uh, a practice. Is is nearby on offer at that point when when scheduling appointments and um, supporting people? Is that something that's come through the QI stuff, Rachel, in terms of front of house conversations? Yeah, definitely. So uh, many of the practices involved in the project really utilise their receptionists and their admin staff in, I guess, promoting and encouraging the use of near me. Um, and so that reception role is vital to getting the members of the public aware of near me, keen to use near me, and even demonstrating and showing them how to use near me before the call. Um, I would say public awareness around near me during the project wasn't high. Um, however, with increased use of NIMI within the practices, that awareness is improving. OK, um, and there's a, a question there about posting implementation link. Uh, that's, I think it's like you've done that already. That's fine. OK, good. I'm just catching up with the chat on here. That's super. Um, Connecting Scott initiative is great. More could be done to raise awareness of this program, e.g. mail drops. Yeah, as the patients that will benefit or not online. This could possibly benefit on patient access. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> Training and use of NIMI should be part of the handover process to devices. Is that, is that, what, what does that relate to? Is that something familiar to you, Rachel? Is so I, I'm taking from that is that when devices are given to practices that within that process, it's that the local IT or near me teams will do yeah. some demonstrations and some training with um, with the clinicians. And on that, so each board does this quite differently, the training. So a lot of some boards do undertake localised training, whereas others have relied on a national VC drop in sessions or the Turas platform videos to do the training. So it does unfortunately differ per board. Um, however, if you do need any advice or help with near me, I do encourage you to contact your near me leads because they can support you now. I think during the initial rollout of equipment that was right at the start of COVID and everyone was very hectic, whereas now I think um, there's a level of a little more calmness. So hopefully you can get that training support you need and definitely have a look at the tour as a platform. Tour as platform. Yeah, yeah. I would agree, I would agree. Um, and um, then, and then, oh, we've got a, ooh, an oh, echo, an echo and a reverb, reverb. What's happened there? What's happened there? <laughs> It's the sharing, the sharing of the video, video. and also, and that, also may that may be the sign, the sign that, sign that <laughs> we'll hand that over. Oh no, we're back on. That's okay. okay. I suppose I wanted to just to pick on, uh, and this leads into the next question about first time use of NIMI is a barrier to the use of NIMI, and I would agree as as a clinician involved in the rollout of NIMI within Shetland, uh, that that this is new. It's the first time. Um, and more support to get patients set up and going. And again, we spent a lot of time alongside patients on the phone, talking them through those initial, how do we get onto near me? And once once that patient's done it once, it's like, okay, I can manage this now. Um, and I and I would suppose I would the biggest the biggest learning we've had as a health board during the pandemic when we were faced with with using near me very quickly was just practice amongst yourselves, practice with your friends, your colleagues. I practiced my mum in her 80s 
just just to sort of you know go through those simple things you know um so and, and once you've got the hang of it because it, it is it is a quite a straightforward system to 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 use but i agree that that um getting over that first initial hump as it were um it, it can be quite a step so um but i would urge you to kind of just just give it a go with each other um okay so hopes yes Yes, can can somebody go to somewhere where there's better broadband, where they can have a confidential conversation? That's a that's a, a, a super concept, and that's something that we should be exploring as well. I think as as a workforce uh, within communities. Um, a bridge as a voice only option. That's very interesting. Um, I think. Is there some future iterations of near me give the option of voice only or can blur, we can blur your screen potentially coming up? Um, but I don't know if you can hide your own hide your own image. Within near me, there are options to choose your bandwidth, so you can choose um, low, high or the recommended is like a medium, so you could always change it down to a lower bandwidth if that doesn't help. Um, perhaps give that a try. Yeah. Yeah. Connectivity. Yeah. So again, I think that, that there's, there's some wider kind of Scottish wide connecting Scotland uh, issues here coming up that we would probably pass back to wherever we need to pass that back to. Receptionists and having a patient can sit at Meshling Nathalie locally. Yeah. And again, if, if that's something that we we need to help support folk with in terms of the, the, the receptionist uh, workforce that I think would be up for looking at that definitely. Yeah. And that we always offer both. It's a great service. Well, that's fantastic to hear Jacqueline. Thank you for sharing that. That's super <laughs> good. Yeah, getting patients set up. Uh, yeah. It is time consuming. I agree. I having having done it, done it myself in Shetland in, in in March, April, May, trying to kind of you know hold hold people's hands through it. Um, and I, I still got phone calls this week from Shetland saying, "Can you help with this?" <laughs> so so yeah. Um, and again, people talking about enthusiasm, but the bandwidth, pixelated images. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, is there any time frame for improving bandwidth? Uh, any thoughts on that, Rachel? <laughs> Million dollar question. We, yeah, we could take this back. Um, so all these all right. men with concerns think, as well as the local training uh, yeah. for new me, we'll take that back. Yeah. I'd like if, if we can hopefully capture this chat in some format and then we can have it in a document and that that would give us something to take back to our, our tech team. Would that be fair? Yeah. Yeah. OK, and there's a question of what areas in Scotland have near me. Uh, my understanding is it's available everywhere. Uh, ask your local uh, IT or near me lead. Um, and uh, yeah, in-house champions is the way to go. Definitely that that peer-to-peer -peer support locally um, is a good model to support the broader team. It just takes one person within a, a building to kind of hopefully help other folk along. Uh, is anyone using near me to do CDM reviews? Pardon my ignorance, CDM. Could anybody got any clues on that? Condition management? No. Chronic, chronic yeah. disease management. Yeah, chronic disease. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's some good examples uh, in diabetes. Um, uh, we, review was covered um, within the uh, quality improvement project. Uh, so a lot of the chronic, so chronic disease management was probably one of the key focuses across the project, and that's different pathways that outlined within the implementation guidance. So have a look at that, and you'll be able to see. Uh, yeah, so yeah, diabetes and asthma reviews were yeah. key. Yeah. I'm just conscious of, of time. I'm just, I want to just pick up this other point here about patient IT, not often up to scratch, close ups don't show clearly. And again, one, one of the simple things we found to address that is, is to talk people through switching the camera on their phone from the one that faces them to the out facing one, which is often a better quality camera. And sometimes that, with a good light source, has given a better image for the clinician to make a judgment on. Um, and, and again, uh, pick, pick, again, picks and foam is is, a, is again one of a suite. You know, a video might not work for that thing that day, uh, and a picture may work better. Um, so I think it's it's all around what's working as a choice for that patient and you on that day. 
Um, but there are means of getting better quality pictures if someone is able to switch the phone around on their device, if that's helpful. Um, and Connecting Scotland. Uh, yeah, we can capture that through the tech team, can we, Fiona? Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, OK. Uh, and Fiona's point here around is often quicker than a face to face and uh, scheduling approach should reflect this. So again, this is this is all important stuff to help you along. Um, uh, that's good. An NSS near me. Yeah, just throw questions into that and one of us will pick them up. And the prevent preventing us from going hard with this. Poor IT quality is poor. Case, yeah. yeah. To email pictures and discuss. OK, I, I can see I can see for certain things that's going to give you a better outcome and it's whatever tool you know is, is going to give you a good outcome. Um, so. Uh, are we? Oh no, there we go. Fiona's. Yeah, facial expressions, yeah. And I think some of those very kind of person centered conversations that you might want to have not having a mask on would, would give you that, that relationship building. There's a really nice video of a GP speaking in somewhere in Scotland, I can't remember where now, talking about uh, anticipatory care plans for people with, with kind of terminal illness. And again, that that behind a mask, I think would be really difficult. And, and doing that uh, in a video call, I can see that being a far higher quality experience for, for the, both the clinician and, and the patient. So um, I am going to stop there, I think, because that's as I'm sure we've had our half an hour um, and, I, and I don't want to take away time from other presenters. So thank you so much for, for engaging and for posing questions and encouragement and comments. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to have um, participated in that. So and I will now hand you over to Tracy, who is coming up next to, to meet with you. Thank you very much.